This video is intended to cover topics that the average Canadian will need to complete their income taxes all by themselves. It walks through the whole process from beginning to end using plain English. It covers some forms for Ontario residents, which are labeled ON-428, ONBEN, ONS-2, and ONS-11, but the majority of the video is for federal forms that apply to all Canadians. There are many income deductions and credits that apply to people who have different circumstances. To keep this video reasonably short and relevant to the average Canadian, I have focused on the most common tax scenarios. This video applies to Canadians with any marital status, who are employees, parents, seniors, students, and or unemployed. This presentation is intended as a guide for anybody who is preparing a regular tax return, either using tax software or using paper forms. The rules and the forms are the same in either case. The following topics are covered by this video. Marital status and the credits for spouse or partner. Claiming credits for children or dependents. Income earned as an employee. Income earned from EI while unemployed. Interest income, capital gains, and dividend income. Income earned from pensions, CPP, and OAS as well as senior credits. Income earned from social assistance. Donations to eligible charities. RRSPs. Credits for rent, credits for property taxes. For any topics that do not apply to you, just ignore that section and do not fill in that form. If certain lines within a form do not apply to you, then these amounts must be left blank, which means zero. The typical Canadian will be able to skip up to half of this video. In the interest of time, the following topics are not discussed in this video since they do not apply to the majority of taxpayers. Self-employment, farming, fishing, partnerships, rental property, medical expenses, disability credits, eligibility criteria for family caregivers for infirm dependents, workers' compensation, pension splitting, repayments to EI or UCCB, capital loss carrybacks, and other credits and deductions such as moving, activities, arts, adoption expenses, sports, disabilities, public transit, credit, renovations, northern resident deductions, foreign tax credits, political contributions, capital gain reserves. If any of these topics apply to you, please research the tax implications further since they have specific rules that will affect your income tax calculations. The Income Tax and Benefits Guide is a very useful resource. Before you begin preparing your taxes, you will need the following tax slips. Check every slip and every form to ensure that it is for the correct year. You will need to collect all the following information which includes all the income you earned and all the tax slips and receipts that apply to you at any point from January 1st to December 31st of the year for which you are preparing your taxes. Last year's Notice of Assessment Letter from the Canada Revenue Agency, T4 slips, T3 and T5 slips, T2022A and TL11 if you are a post-secondary student, receipts for donations to eligible charities, receipts for union and professional membership dues, receipts for child care, receipts for rent and property taxes, T4A OAS if you earned old age security pension income, T4A P if you earned Canada pension plan income, T4A RSP if you have RSP income that needs to be reported. The following forms apply to all taxpayers. T1 General, Schedule 1 Federal Tax, ON 428 Ontario Tax, ON BEN Ontario Benefits and Grants. The following forms may or may not apply to you. Schedule 1 Worksheet Credits for Seniors Schedule 2 Federal Amounts Transferred from a Spouse or Partner Schedule 3 Taxable Capital Gains Federal Worksheet for Investment Income Schedule 5 Spouse, Partner and Dependents Schedule 6 Working Income Tax Benefit Form Schedule 7 RRSP Schedule 9 Donations Schedule 11 Post-Secondary Federal Credits ONS2 Provincial Amounts Transferred from Spouse or Partner ONS 11, post-secondary provincial credits, form T778 if you paid for child care. In the interest of time, this video does not repeat instructions that are clearly explained on each form. For each form that applies to you, please read all the instructions on the form, including the back of all your tab slips, which are a very helpful guide for filling out the necessary form. If you are preparing a tax return together with a spouse or common law partner, it is easier to prepare the lower income tax return first because this return will likely have unused Schedule 1 credit amounts that can be credit transferred to the higher income tax return. 
This will reduce the total taxes paid by the couple and will not affect the taxes of the lower income return at all. I recommend that the forms are prepared in the order that they are presented in this video. This will minimize confusion and avoids needlessly shifting back and forth between documents. When this video refers to income earned or any other activities that occurred during the year, this means during the period from January 1st to December 31st for the year that is shown at the top of the forms, slips, and schedules. The T1 general form is the summary of all other forms, schedules, and slips in your package. Page 1 identifies the taxpayer. Page 2 shows income from all sources. Page 3 shows deductions from income. Page 4 shows the taxes, credits, and refund or balance owing. On page 1 of the T1 general form, fill in your name, current address, social insurance number, and date of birth. Choose English or French. Email address is optional. Select your marital status as of December 31st. Fill in the province that you lived in on December 31st. Fill in the spouse and or common law partner's name, income, social insurance number, and UCC benefits or repayments. On page 2 of the T1 general form, check the foreign property question at the top. Line 101, add up all employment income that is shown on box 14 of our, each of your T4 slips. Line 102, add up all commission income from box 42 of each of your T4 slips. Line 104, add up any other employment income that you earn that is not included in the above amounts. This may include severance pay. If the taxpayer is a senior who has earned pension income, Line 113, enter the old age security pension earnings from box 18 of the T4A OAS slip. Line 114, enter the CPP or QPP benefits that were paid to them from box 20 of the T4A P slip. Line 115, enter all other pension income such as from a company pension or a foreign pension. Line 146, enter the net federal supplements amount from box 21 of the T4A OAS slip. In line 117, enter the universal child care benefit amount that was received. Line 119, if you are unemployed, enter the employment insurance EI that was earned during the year from box 14 of the T4E slip. Lines 120 and 121 below do not apply to any interest or dividends that were earned by investments that you have in a TFSA, RSP, or RSP account. Line 120, if you earn dividends from owning stocks or shares of a company, You'll need to fill in the federal worksheet which will provide the total amount that goes into this line. The federal worksheet is explained in full later in this presentation. Line 121, if you earned interest or income from investments, you'll need to fill in the federal worksheet which will provide the total amount that goes into this line. Line 127, if you sold any investments during the year for a price was, that was more than what you paid for it at any point in time in the past, you will need to fill out Schedule 3, which will provide the total that goes into this line. This includes real estate that is not your principal residence, and also stocks or bonds that are not in a TFSA, RRSP, or RSP account. Schedule 3 is explained in full later in this presentation. Line 129. If you earned income from an RRSP, earned annuity payments made withdrawal from your RRSP, or if you did not pay back the minimum required home buyer plan amount, you will need to input the RSP income amount from your T4 RSP slip. Line 130. This other income line is for the taxpayer to declare any other source of income that was earned during the year that was not already declared in any of the lines above. This can include scholarships or education grants. Line 145. Social assistance income is reported here. Line 150. This sum is called the total income. The next step is to figure out which deductions can be applied against your total income. Total income minus deductions equals net income. T1 General Form, page 3. Line 206. The pension adjustment is the sum of all amounts found in box 52 of the T4 slips and box 034 of all T4A slips. Line 207. Registered pension plan deduction is the sum of the amounts in box 20 of all T4 slips and box 032 of all T4A slips. Line 212, fees paid for membership in a workers labor union or professional membership fees, for example a teachers union, are found in box 44 of the T4 slip, or if you paid separately then you can use your receipt instead of a slip. 
Line 214, if you would like to claim a deduction for child care expenses, you will need to calculate this amount using Form T778. Line 221, if you paid carrying costs or interest in a loan that was used to buy investments, you will need to calculate this amount using the federal worksheet. Line 236, this calculation is called net income. Line 244, military and police personnel input their deduction from Box 43 under T4 slip. Line 250. If you earned old age security pension income, social assistance, or workers' compensation, you'll need to input an amount here using the following calculation. Line 234 from page 3 of the T1 General, minus line 117 from page 2 of the T1 General, minus line 125 from page 2 of the T1 General, plus line 213 from page 3 of the T1 General. If the result of this calculation is more than 75,910, Unfortunately, you'll need to contact the CRA to figure out how much to deduct in line 250. Otherwise, copy the amount that is on line 147 of page 2 of T1 General into line 250. Line 260, the taxable income, is the net income that has been reduced by the above deduction. Page 4 of the T1 General form. This page shows the actual taxes that are payable to the federal and provincial governments. It then shows how much income tax was already deducted from your pay stubs throughout the year. If your total payable is less than your total credits, you will have a refund. Otherwise, you will have a balance owing. Before completing this page, you will need to complete all the other forms, which are called schedules. So this video will return to page 4 of the T1 General after discussing all the other schedules. Schedule 2 is only prepared for the return with the higher income. It can be used if any of the following applies. Line 353, if your spouse or partner was 65 or older during the year, input the amount indicated on the form. Line 361, enter the family caregiver amount from line 367 of your spouse or partner is Schedule 1. Schedule 1 will be explained in full later on in this presentation. Line 355, enter the pension income amount from line 314 of your spouse or partner is Schedule 1. Line 360, enter the federal education amount that has been designated to you as shown on your spouse or partner's T2022A TL11A, TL11B, or TL11C slip. Line 351. Calculate lines 7 to 10 as shown on the form. The last number on this form is then copied onto line 326 of the Schedule 1, only for the return with the higher income. Schedule 3 calculates the income from capital gains for all investments that were sold during the year of the tax return. For each of these investments, fill in the section that describes the investment that you sold. Section 3. Mutual funds and stock market shares. Section 4. Real estate that you do not live in, such as vacant land, houses, townhouses, or condominiums. Section 5. Bonds and bond funds. Schedule 3, page 1. Fill in the details of each investment and the columns. For year of acquisition, enter the year that it was bought. For proceeds of disposition, enter the amount that you sold it for. For adjusted cost base, enter the amount that you bought it for. For outlays and expenses from disposition, enter any costs that you incurred to sell it, such as real estate commissions, legal fees, broker fees, etc. And for gains and loss, this is equal to column 2 minus column 3 minus column 4. Line 174, enter all capital gains or losses from your T5, T5013, and T4PS slips. Line 176, enter capital gains from or losses from your T3 slips. Line 191, add up all capital gains and losses as indicated on the form. Enter the same amount into line 197. These are your total capital gains or losses. Line 199, taxable capital gains or losses are calculated by multiplying the total by 50%. This amount is then inputted into line 127 on page 2 of the T1 general form. If your amount is less than zero, you cannot claim a loss as a reduction of income during the year. If you would like to apply this loss against capital gains in the different years capital gains, please refer to form T1A and guide T4037. The principal residence section should only be completed if you sold real estate during the year that you yourself lived in as your primary home, which is called the principal residence. Place a check mark in the box that applies. It will be necessary to fill out form T2091IND, or if the homeowner is deceased, then fill out form T1255. 
The federal worksheet calculates your income from interest and or dividends. Before 2018, this was done using Schedule 4, however, Schedule 4 was discontinued after 2017. Section 1, Dividends from Shares or Stocks of Canadian Corporations. For each investment, provide the name of the investment, the quantity of the investment, if applicable, and the to taxable amount of dividends that are provided on the tax slips that are provided by the bank. Please note that the taxable amount of dividends is higher than the actual dividends that were paid to you, and this is not an error. Both amounts are provided on the slip and it is important that they are not confused. The total eligible and non-eligible dividends are summed up on lines 180 and 120 and then these totals are copied onto line 180 and 120 on page 2 of the T1 general form. Section 2 Interest and Other Investment Income For each investment provide the name of the investment, the quantity of the investment if applicable, and the bank that pays you interest as indicated on the tax slips that the banks provide to you. Any other income that was earned from corporations outside of Canada, such as interest and or dividends, are then put into that section. The total is summed up on line 121, and then this total is copied onto line 121 of, on page 2 of the T1 general form. Schedule 3, Carrying Charges and Interest and Expenses Fill in this section if you paid any fees related to your investments, such as interest to borrow money, that was then used to buy the investments. For example, you may have paid interest on an RSP loan, or you may have bought stocks on margin. Provide the details of these costs, the banks that you paid, and the amounts that you paid. The total is summed up on line 221, and then this total is copied onto line 221 on page 3 of the T1 general form. Schedule 5, Spouse or Partner and Dependents. Line 303, Spouse or Common Law Partner. If your marital status changed during the year, tick the box and enter the date of the change. Line 1, enter the base amount which is provided on the form. Line 2. Enter the family caregiver amount that is provided on the form if you are eligible for it. Eligibility is explained in full in the Income Tax Benefits Guide. Lines 3, 4, and 5. Calculate the sum, then subtract your spouse or partner's net income found in line 3, 236 on page 3 of the T1 general form. If this results in a negative number, enter 0. Otherwise, copy this amount onto line 303 of your Schedule 1. Line 305, Eligible Dependent, for example, your children. If your marital status changed during the year, tick the box and enter the date of the change. Enter the name, address, year of birth, and relationship for each of your dependents. Line 1, enter the base amount which is provided on the form. Line 2, enter the family caregiver amount that is provided on the form if you're eligible for it, according to the criteria in the Income Tax and Benefits Guide. Line 3, 4, and 5, Calculate the sum, then subtract your dependent's net income found on line 236 of page 3 of the T1 general form. If your dependent earns no income, subtract 0. If this subtraction results in negative number, enter 0. Otherwise, copy this amount onto line 305 of sch your Schedule 1. Line 307, Caregiver Amount. Enter the name, address, year of birth, and relationship for each of your dependents. Line 1, enter the base amount which is provided on the form. Line 2. Enter your dependent's net income found on line 236 of page 3 on their T1 general form. If your dependent earns no income, subtract 0. Line 3. If this subtraction results in a negative number, enter 0. Repeat the above calculation for each eligible dependent. Enter the total amount that you're, de that you're claiming for all dependents on line 307 of your Schedule 1. In box 5112, enter the total number of dependents for whom you claim the caregiver amount. To find out if Schedule 6 applies to you, check the chart on the bottom of page 1, which is labeled Adjusted Family Net Income Levels. If your adjusted family net income level is higher than the basic WITB threshold, then this means that you do not need to complete Schedule 6. If you're not sure, you can complete it anyway, but it will result in a final amount of zero if your family income is higher than the thresholds. Step 1. Indicate whether or not you have an eligible spouse and or eligible dependent. If you have no eligible spouse, leave the spouse columns blank since these amounts would all be zeros. Lines 3 and 7. Enter yours and your spouse's employment income from line 101 and 104. Line 8. This is the sum of both line 7 amounts. Lines 9 and 12. Enter the net income from line 236. Line 13. Enter your UCCB income from line 117. Line 14 is equal to line 12 minus line 13. Line 15 is the sum of both columns of line 14. 
Line 15 tells you if you can pre proceed with the WITB claim. Check it against the threshold chart at the bottom of page 1 of Schedule 6. Step 2 is self-explanatory. Copy the final amount in line 28 onto line 453 on page 4 of your T1 general form. Schedule 7 calculates your deduction for the amounts that you have saved in your Registered Retirement Savings Plan RRSP, and Registered Saving Plan RSP accounts. Part A Contributions Line 1. Input your unused RRSP PRPP contributions that is shown on your Notice of Assessment. Line 2. Input the amount of money that you transferred into your RRSP accounts from March to December as shown on the tax slip from your bank. Line 3. Input the amount of money that you transferred into your RRSP account from January to March of the current year as shown on your tax slip from the banks. Add up the amounts as indicated on the form in lines 4 and 5. Part B. Home Buyer Plan or Lifelong Learning Plan Copy line 5 from page 1 into line 6 on page 2. Lines 246 and 262. Input the amount from your contributions that you are going to use to repay to your HBP and LLP. This applies to you if you used your RRSP savings to buy your home or to pay for your education and use the RRSP deduction in the year that you withdrew from your RRSP. Add up the amounts as indicated on the form in lines 7 and 8, then subtract line 9 from line 6. The result is your RRSP contributions available to deduct. Part C, RRSP deduction. Line 11. Input your RRSP deduction limit amount for the year that is shown in your Notice of Assessment. Line 12. Input the amount from your, that your employer contributed to your PRPP from line 205 on page 3 of your T1 general form. Line 240. This is the amount of your available RRSP that you would like to deduct from your spouse or partner's income for that year. Line 15. Is the amount of your available RRSPs that you would like to deduct from your own income for the year. Line 17. This calculation is copied on line 208 on page 3 of your T1 general form. Part E, Home Buyer Plan or Lifelong Learning Plan withdraws. If you withdrew RSPs during the year in order to buy your home under the HPP or pay for your education under the LLP, input the amounts from the T4 RSP slips that your bank has provided to you. Schedule 9 Donations. Input your re regular charitable donations into lines 1 and 5. Line 6. Input your net income from line 236 on page 3 of your T1 general form. Multiply line 6 by 75% to get line 7. Copy line 7 to line 12. Line 340. Input the amount from line 5 or line 12, whichever is lower. Copy line 340 into line 15. Line 16. Enter the amount indicated on the form and subtract it to calculate line 17. Copy line 17 into lines 18, 20, and 22. If your taxable income was less than $202,800, skip line 23 and enter 0 into, lines tw into line 25. Fill in lines 26 to 32 as indicated on the form. Copy line 32 into line 349 at the bottom of page 1 of your Schedule 1. Schedule 11 Post-Secondary Education Line 1 Input your unused federal amounts from your Notice of Assessment. If you have none, enter zero. Line 320. Input the tuition you paid during the year as shown on your tuition tax slip, T2202, T2202A or TL11, provided by your university or college. Line 4. If your taxable income from line 260 on page 3 of your T1 general form is less than the amount indicated on this line, then input your taxable income into this line. If it's more than the amount indicated, divide the amount from line 43 on page 2 of your Schedule 1 by 0 0.15. Lines 5 to 13, input the amounts as indicated on the form. Line 325, enter the number of months from column B of the T2202A or TL11 tax slips. Line 328, enter the number of months from column C of the T2202A or TL11 tax slips. If you do not want to transfer your education tax credits to anybody and will use them to offset your own future income, then leave lines 11 to 18 blank and copy your amount from line 10 
into line 323 on page 1 of your Schedule 1. Fill in the following lines if you want to transfer some of your education tax credits to any one of the following people. Your spouse, your common-law partner, your parents, your grandparents, your spouse's parents, or your spouse's grandparents. If your spouse or partner is claiming an amount for you in line 303 or line 326 on page 1 of your Schedule 1, then you cannot transfer these credits to either of your parents or grandparents. Line 14. Input the amounts from line 2. If this amount is more than $5,000, input $5,000. Line 15. Input the amount from line 9. Line 16. Calculate as indicated. This result is the maximum you can transfer. Line 327. You can decide how much of your tax credits you want to transfer to the other person. This can be any amount up to the maximum transferable amount above. Any amounts that are not transferred or offset against income earned during the year will be carried forward into your unused credits for the upcoming year. Line 18. Calculate as indicated. Schedule ONS11 Ontario Post-Secondary Education If you are not a resident of Ontario, please note that your province or territory might have a provincial form for post-secondary education credits. The Ontario Schedule 11 form, labeled ONS11, is required if you've completed this federal Schedule 11. It calculates credits that will be used in the Ontario Tax Form 428. The steps to complete this form are very similar to the Schedule 11 form, except that it involves less steps to complete. To keep this video as brief as possible, please refer to the previous Schedule 11 slides for guidance on completing the Ontario Schedule 11 form. Schedule 1 Federal Tax, page 1. Schedule 1 calculates the credits that are applied against your taxable income. Line 300, basic personal amount is the amount provided on the form. Line 301, age amount is for seniors and is calculated using the following calculation from the Schedule 1 worksheet that is included in the tax booklet. Net income from line 236 of the T1 general form minus $36,976. If negative, enter 0. This amount is then multiplied by 0 0.15. The resulting number is subtracted from 7,333. If negative, enter 0. Line 303, spouse or common law amount. If this applies to you, you will need to fill in Schedule 5 to calculate this amount. Line 304, family caregiver amount for spouse, partner, eligible dependents, 18 or older. If you are eligible according to the criteria in the Income Tax and Benefits Guide, you'll need to fill out Schedule 5 to calculate this amount. Line 305, Eligible Dependent Amount. If you have children, you will need to fill in Schedule 5 to calculate this amount. Line 367, Family Caregiver Amount for Children. If you are eligible according to the criteria in the, in the Income Tax and Benefits Guide, enter the amount of number of children in Line 352, multiply it as shown on the form, and the result goes into Line 367. Line 308. Your CPP or QPP contributions are found in box 16 and 17 of all T4 slips. Line 312. Your employment insurance premiums are found in box 18 and 55 of all T4 slips. Line 363. If you are in employment income, input the number that is provided as the maximum amount on this line. If your employment income was less than the maximum, then input your employment income from line 101 or 104. Line 369. If you bought a qualifying home during the year, input $5,000. Line 314. Use the following calculation from the federal worksheet that is included in the tax booklet to calculate the pension income amount. Amount from line 115 of the T1 general form minus foreign pension income included in line 115 minus U.S. IRA income included in line 115 minus income from an RIF or PRPP included in line 15 plus annuity income from box 16 of your T4 RSP. If the result of this calculation is greater than $2,000, then enter $2,000 into line 314 on page 1 of your Schedule 1. If the result of this calculation is less than $2,000, then enter your result into line 314 on page 1 of Schedule 1. Line 319. If you paid interest on student loans, input the interest amount. Do not include any of the principal portion of the payment. Line 323. If you have unused federal education credits, Use Schedule 11 to calculate this amount. Line 324. If your child has transferred their student credits to you, input the amount from Line 327 of the child's Schedule 11. Do not attach a copy of the child's Schedule 11 to your return. Line 326. If your spouse or common-law partner transferred their unused Schedule 1 credits to you, use Schedule 2 to calculate this amount. This is for their unused credit amounts for age, for seniors, 
family caregiver, pension income, disability amount, or student credits. Line 335 is a sum which is multiplied by the rate on the form. The result is inputted into line 338. Line 349 is calculated using Schedule 9. Line 350 is the sum of the two lines just above it. At the top of the second page of Schedule 1, input the taxable income from line 260 on page 3 of the T1 general form. Use this amount to select the column that applies to your taxable income. Within the column, input your taxable income as indicated on the left-hand side of the form and calculate it as shown on the form. Input the result into the line just below the columns, that is, into lines 43 and 45. Line 350. Copy the last amount from the bottom of page 1 of your Schedule 1. Line 425. Input the federal dividend cr tax credit amount if you had investments that earned dividends during the year. If you reported dividends on line 120 on page 2 of your T1 general form, enter the total from the dividend tax credits from taxable Canadian corporations as shown on your bank's tax slips. If you received eligible dividends, this federal dividend tax credit will be 15.0198% of the amount on line 120. Line 49 is the sum of the amounts just above it. Line 45 minus line 49 is the input into lines 429, 406, 417, and 420. If this number is less than 0, then input 0. Line 420 from this page is copied onto line 420 on page 4 of the T1 general form. Schedule ONS2, Provincial Transfers from the Spouse or Partner, is only prepared for the return with the higher income. ONS2 should only be included if any of the following applies. Line 5902, if your spouse or partner was 65 or older during the year, input the amount indicated on the form. Line 5905, enter the pension income amount from line 5836 of your spouse or partner's Schedule 1. Line 4 is the sum of the lines above it. Line 5, if your taxable income from line 260 on page 3 of your T1 general is less than the amount indicated on the line, then input your taxable income into this line. If it's more than the amount indicated, divide the amount from line 38 on page 2 of your ON428 by 0 0.0505. Calculate lines 7 and 8 as shown in the form. The last number on this form is then copied onto line 5864 on Ontario 428, only for the return with the higher income. ON428 Ontario Taxes if you are not a resident of Ontario, please note that your province or territory has a mandatory form for income taxes. The following st few slides apply only to Ontario residents. ON428 calculates the credits that will be applied against your taxable income. Line 5804, basic personal amount, is the amount that is provided in the form. Line 5808, age amount, is for seniors and it is calculated using the following calculation from the Ontario Provincial Worksheet. Net income from line 236 minus 37,635. If negative, enter 0. This amount is then multiplied by 0 0.15. The resulting number is subtracted from 5,055. If negative, enter 0. Line 5812. Subtract the base amount provided on this line minus your spouse or common law partner's net income found on line 3, 236 on page 3 of the T1 general form. Line 5816. Eligible dependent amount. If you have children, subtract the base amount provided on this line minus your child's net income, found on line 236 of page 3 of the T1 general form. Line 5819, enter the caregiver amount using the following calculation from the Ontario Provincial Worksheet. 21,195 minus your dependent's net income from line 236. If negative, enter 0. If this is greater than 4,794, 4, then use 4,794. Now subtract the amount that is in line 5816. The resulting number is calculated for each dependent, and the, total, and the total for all dependents is input into 5819 on the ON 428 form, only if you're eligible. Line 5824, input your CPP or QPP contributions from line 308 of page 1 of your Schedule 1. Line 5832, input your employment insurance premiums from line 312 on page 1 of your Schedule 1. Line 5836, Input your pension income amount from line 314 on page 1 of your Schedule 1. If this amount is greater than the maximum, then input the maximum provided on this line. Line 5852. If you paid any interest for, for student loans, 
Input the amount from line 319 of page 1 of your Schedule 1. Line 5856. If you have unused in provincial education credits, use ONS11 to calculate this amount. Line 5864. If your spouse or common law partner transferred their unused Ontario 428 credits to you, use Schedule ONS2 to calculate this amount. This is for their unused credit amounts for age for seniors, pension income, or disability amount. Line 5880 is a sum which is multiplied by the rate on the form. The result is input into line 5884. Lines 2526 and 5896 are calculated using Schedule 9. Line 6150 is the sum of lines 24 and 27. At the top of the second page of Schedule ON428, input the taxable income from line 260 on page 3 of the T1 general form. Use this amount to select the column that applies to your taxable income. Within the column, input your taxable income as indicated on the left-hand side of the form, and calculate as shown on the form. Input the result into line, into the line just below the columns, that is, into lines 36, 37, and 39. Line 40. Input the amount from line 6150 at the bottom of page 1 of your Schedule ON428. Line 41. Subtract lines 39 minus line 40. Copy line 41 into line 47 if you do not have any investments that earn dividends during the year, and leave lines 42 to 46 blank. If you earn dividend income, input the Ontario Dividend Tax Credit amount into line 43 and calculate lines 42 to 46 as indicated on the form. This credit amount in line 43 is provided by the following calculation from the Ontario Provincial Worksheet that is included in the tax booklet. Line 120 from page 2 minus line 180 from the T1 general form. The resulting number is then multiplied by 0 0.1. This is then added to the following amount. 0 0.032863 multiplied by line 180 of the T1 general form. This sum is entered into lines 44 and 6152 of the Ontario 428 schedule. Line 47 is equal to line 41 minus 46. Calculate lines 48 to 56 as indicated on the form. Copy line 56 into lines 58 and 59. Calculate lines 60 to 67 as indicated on the form. Copy line 67 into lines 69 and 71. Line 72 is calculated using the Ontario Health Premium Chart on page 4 of Schedule ON 428. Your taxable income from line 260 on page 3 of the T1 general form is entered in the appropriate row. The result on the right hand side is then entered into line 72 on page 3 of your Schedule ON 428. Line 73 is the sum of lines 71 and 72. Line 73 from this page is then copied onto line 428 on page 4 of the T1 general form. ONBEN form Box 6118. If you paid rent or property tax, or if you lived in a student residence or long-term care home, tick, tick, tick this box. Box 6113. If you are a senior and you paid property taxes during the year, tick this box. Line 6110. Input the rent that you paid during the year. Line 6112. Input the property taxes that you paid during the year for the home that you live in, your pr principal residence. Box 6114. Tick this box if you lived in a student residence during the year. Input the rent that you paid to live in a public or non-profit long-term care home during the year into line 6123. Input the rent you paid to live in a private long-term care home into the year during the year into line 6110. For any property that you paid rent and or property tax, fill in the chart with the address, postal code, number of months you lived there, amount paid, and the recipient's name. Page 4 of the T1 general form. Line 420. Input the amount from line 420 at the bottom of page 2 of your Schedule 1. Line 428. Input the amount from the last line at the bottom of page 2 of your Ontario 428 form. Line 435. Total payable is the sum of the amounts above it. Line 437 is the sum of all income taxes that were already deducted from your pay stubs throughout the year. It can be found on your T4 and other slips. Line 453. If you had an amount in the last line of page 2 of your Schedule 6, input it into this line. Line 482. Total credits is the sum of the amounts above it. If your total payable is less than your total credits, you will have a refund. Otherwise, you'll have a balance owing. Sign and date the return and input your phone number. All forms, schedules, slips, and receipts should be submitted to the CRA 
and a copy should be kept by the taxpayer. Please note that the purpose of this video is only to provide guidance to Canadian residents who would like to attempt to prepare, prepare their own income tax returns. It should not be considered to be a complete guide for tax preparation, nor is it intended to be a substitute for tax training. The viewer is advised to perform further research into the relevance and applicability of these and other deductions for the specific income taxes. Due to the sensitive nature and financial implications involved in the calculation of personal income taxes, please consult the online resources that are provided by the Canadian Reve Canada Revenue Agency or contact them by phone. Alternatively, your local tax professional can, pre can review your return and provide more guidance that is specific to your situation. This information is al also available in book form on Amazon.com. The title of the book is called How to Prepare Your Canadian Income Taxes in Plain English. Thank you for watching.